Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about the Hima people of Burundi, Uganda and Tanzania. Before I start, I will start with the Burundian Hima people. So Burundian Hima people are the Himas who went to Burundi in 1800 and the first three presidents after the kings, three Burundian presidents, Michombero, Jean-Baptiste and Buyoya, they were all members of uh, Hima people from Tanzania who immigrated to Burundi in 1800. So, you can see it's a huge, huge ethnic group. They are Kushites, but they speak Bantu language because the whole East Africa, you know, if you look at the Bantu people of Tanzania, they don't look like the same as Bantu people from other Bantu countries. So, why? Because most of East African Great Lakes was inhabited by Kushitic people before uh, the arrival of the Bantu tribes. So the Kushitic and hunter-gatherers, they lived together for thousands of years because that's their native place. But uh, Bantu expansion, sometimes about 3,000 years ago, that's when the interaction was made between the Himas and uh, the Kushites and the Bantu people. So now today the uh, Bantu people they are the majority and most of Eastern also then Kushite people from Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Burundi, Rwanda. Now they have intermarried. You can still see they still look on Africans but there's uh, some connection with the Bantus as they live together as they are also minority people. So like I said, the Hima people, they live in Burundi, Uganda, and Tanzania. So, the one in Burundi nowadays, they are called Tutsi. So, it's like the Tutsi clan. The Hima people of Burundi, they refer themselves as Tutsi instead of Hima. And they also speak the same language as other Tutsis and Hutus in Burundi. But, they were immigrated. So, why did those immigrants uh, from Tanzania... In 1800, who came to Burundi? Why did they have all the first three presidents, you know, of Burundi? So the the reason is that the Hima people of Karagwe, Tanzania, they had a massive kingdom. You know, you have you probably if you're from Burundi, you probably heard a song uh, from Burundi which says that the uh, Ngoma ya Ruhinda. So basically which means the reign of King Ruhinda. King Ruhinda was a Hima king who ruled in Kagera province of Tanzania and Kigoma province of Tanzania, but also had so much influence or if not even ruled some part of Burundi. So those Burundian people, they sing as King Ruhinda is the king, even though they are, the King Ruhinda was not in Burundi. So sometimes in the past, King Ruhinda of... So Hima people of Tanzania probably ruled some part of Burundi too. And that's how uh, they intermarried because they are all Kushite people. So even though they speak different language, they always marry from each other, they always exchange cows because that's something they have in common. So the Hima people, they are very tall people. You know? And if you think Tutsi, they are giants, I'll say that Hima are the biggest giant people I have ever seen. The women are big, tall, huge. It's like absolutely beautiful. So they are giant people. They live in uh, Tanzania, like I said, and Burundi. So uh, they had a powerful kingdom. The kingdom of Ruhinda, which was based in Karagwe, Tanzania, the province of Kagera, uh, King Ruhinda did not just rule the Hima people. You know, it he was a it was a kingdom that stretches all the way from Kagera, Tanzania, Kigoma, Tanzania, and of course part of Burundi, and even some uh, Rwandan ancient kings. We also traveled to Karagwe, which was the capital city of the kingdom of Hima people, which is now in Tanzania. So, those are the Kushai people. They had a massive kingdom. They ruled. You probably heard a song from Diamond from Tanzania. A song called Kigoma. And then in that song, they, this place where they sing, they say that Mwami Ruhinda, 
So there are also Kigomba people talking about the king, this Tutsi king or the Hima king from Kagera. Not even, not, he was not even from Kigoma. But you can hear the Kigoma people saying that he was the king. So the kingdom of Hima people was huge, massive empire, massive kingdom. And that's how, uh, but now today they just have a territory of Karagwe in province of Kagera, Tanzania and also part of Uganda. So, but still, the influence is still visible all over. So, me personally, I don't know if Tutsis and Himas, they are same ethnic group that's separated, or if they were always two separate Kushirik people, you know. It's all possible because there were so many Kushirik people in Eastern Africa by Great Lakes region, near the Lake Victoria, Tanzania, Uganda, Kenya. So there's so many uh, ethnic groups, Tutsi group, but uh, those people, they could be from the same Kushiri group, but I doubt that Tutsis and Hima, they are probably, uh, they are all Kushiri group of people, but uh, they are probably different from different, you know, they are, when I see the Hima people, it's absolutely, there's no doubt that they have a connection with the Oromo people of Ethiopia and the way they, the headbands, the way the women at women attires. So there's so many connections with the Horn Africans. That's probably Somali. It could be Somali, it could be Oromo. We don't know for sure unless we do a deep investigation. But, you know, we have to connect the Horn Africans with those people, you know, those are the Horn Africans, the Kushite. Maybe they never came from the Horn, but they were always part of the Horn because the kingdom, the Kushite king kingdoms, you know, were all all the way East Africa. So those were other miners, small kingdoms from the Kushite people. So Kushite people, they ruled. That's one thing they have in common. So. Everywhere they were, they had kings, they ruled, and I don't think they ruled because they were superior than Bantu people, but I think that when, in the past, when the Bantu immigrants came, they found themselves in the kingdoms of those Kushite people, now known as Tutsis, Himas. So that's how the Tutsis ruled. So I don't think they were immigrants who came and then took over other tribes and then ruled them. I don't think that's what happened. I think... Because they are native to East Africa, you know, where, whereas Bantus originated somewhere in Cameroon 3,000 years ago. So, I do think that when Bantu arrived in Central, I mean, East Africa, by Great Lakes region, that's when they found themselves under the leadership of those Kushite kingdoms. And those Kushites continued to rule, but over the years they became a minority and now those people they start saying that they are they it's their land with, because their language is more popular hey you speak our, you, our language we don't have a language so therefore you are you are foreigners you look like ethiopians you look like somalis you don't look like us so now they switch, switch you know, when the story was the other way, so they switched it around by start calling the minority groups who are also the native people to the region, they start calling them foreigners. So, that's like what happened to hunter-gatherers. Many hunter-gatherers were killed by those Bantu. Until today in Congo, like the, uh, both the people in Katanga, they are being killed, those hunter-gatherers. So, once... You become a minority there's always a resistance people trying to fight you know take over you control you know this that but doesn't mean the minorities they are uh, the foreigners or the second class but just like in america in america you see the native american they are the minority but before the arrival of europeans the country had more than 80 million people but they all gone you know and that was in the 1800s so imagine if they were never killed, how many millions of Native Americans we will have today? So the same thing. So 
the immigrants they come they become the majority the Bantu immigrant and then the Kushites of of southern East Africa such known as to known as today as known today as the Himas the Tutsis and many more ethnics now they are viewed as foreigners if you have a long nose they think you are Somali or Ethiopian you, they think you don't belong to the region you know it's just discrimination well, ignoring people, ignoring the fact that uh, those people are actually the native to the region of East Africa because that's their home. You know, even if they are from Somalia, and Somalia is bordered by Kenya, so you can say that uh, they are foreigners because that region of East Africa is their home. So, those are the Hima people the kings and queens of the Kushites. You know, we need to unite all the Kushite people, all the people, we are same people, same ethnics. And that's pretty much the history of East Africa. When I, every time I see many Tanzanians, I just think they are, uh, they are from the same, the Kushitic people, but when you talk to them, they're like, oh, me, I'm, I'm Bantu. So, it seems like many, many, many Kushitic tribes will have been absorbed into Bantu tribes. But, that's why many uh, Bantu tribes in East Africa, they look more on Africans, even though they are Bantus. An example would be the, uh, the Kikuyu people of Kenya. Kikuyu people, those people are mixed race. They are no longer Bantu as they claim to be. They are like mixed Bantus and uh, Kushites, as a result, they have so many people who look like Tutsis because Tutsis also have mixed with the Bantus, even though not all of them. So, Tutsis they have so many people, so many people still, you will never differentiate them from the Horn Africans. So, but there's connection with the Bantu too, you know. So, after doing my DNA, I was surprised there's a Tutsi from Congo. Banyamulang. I was surprised that I do not have Bantu genetics that much. So I had Nilotic people. So Nilotic people is another branch uh, such as Maasai, South Sudanese people, many tribes in Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda. So those Nilotic tribes, they, they are cattle holders, they have uh, they are dark skin, tall people. So, but they are not Kushite. It's like a different branch. So those guys they are the one who are related to the Tutsis, plus they are the mixture of the Horn Africans. So most Tutsi, especially those in Congo, we do not have much genetics from the Bantu people. Instead, we have of Nilotic people and Kushitic people. So which is absolutely amazing. I didn't know. So specifically, the Maasai of Tanzania, they had interacted with the Tutsis sometimes in the past, you know, we don't know when was that, but there is a lot of genetic connection between the Maasai people of Tanzania and Kenya and the Tutsis. I'm not sure much about the Hima uh, connection with the Maasai or which if they are connected to the other Bantu, but one thing for sure, one thing we have in common is that we are the ancient kings and queens of Southern Kush. You know, should be proud of it. There's no shame. That's our land, our motherland. That's where we came from. Yes, we are Kushitic people. We are East Africans. And we are Himas and Tutsis. Look at those beautiful, gorgeous people. The giant people of East Africa. The Hima people. So, anything else? Uh, yeah, the Hima, they could be Somali. They could be Somali. They could be Oromo. But they have to have a connection, you know. Some people say that oh, we are not Somali, we are not uh, Ethiopians or so Romo, we are just Southern Kushitic people. Some, but that is just political, you know. Those people they have a connection. You, know, you see, Somali sometimes I can't tell. You know, there's a place I work um, at school, so I saw some students. Uh, um, who I, 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 I actually thought they were from Eritrea, but later on I came to find out they were Tutsi from Congo. So, people from my same tribe, but because 
we look so much uh, on African. Sometimes me myself, I can't tell who is my people unless I found them in my community speaking our language. You know, so they look Kushidik. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye bye.